Uh, hello, uh, ladies and gentlemen. This is C. Paul Singh, President Nisbet Edison. At the moment, I'm speaking from North Carolina, USA. I'm based, actually, I'm based in Chandigarh, Punjab. I must say a few words about my organization before I proceed further. And about myself, I remained as a head of a police force in the country before retirement. And before that, I was, for some time, lecturer in English in an institute affiliated to the Punjab University. After my retirement, I have been deeply associated with a number of social organizations and have been frequently meeting you or interacting with Indian audience on various channels, YouTubes, as well as TV channels. My organization today, which I represent is NISMAT. That's the National Institute of Security, Safety, Management and Applied Technology. This institution was raised about 30 years back. It started its initial sessions on training basically security training, security management, and loss prevention, etc. With the passage of time, it extended. Nowadays, for the last two years plus, we are having Nismuth Forum. Nismuth Forum is conducting a number of webinar, interactive sessions, YouTube recording, and at times question and answer sessions. We had the luck and the privilege of having a large number of ideas who have liked our session. With these words, I'll proceed further for today's sub subject. Today's subject is that Pakistan in the next six months. How do you see Pakistan in the next six months? And we have with us a very learned speaker, Mr. Araf Ajakia. He is a Pakistan-born human rights activist and a YouTuber. He has attended as a human rights activist at United Nations Human Rights Council sessions in Geneva regularly since 1994. He is in exile from Pakistan. And exile was, the cause of exile was his association, his activism, and his advocating the cause of Mujahir, the rights of Mujahir, that how their human rights are being allegedly violated, and particularly with reference to the violation which has been done or is being done in Azad Kashmir. He has claimed in his talks that the Pakistan army and Pakistan based terrorist organization are waging a proxy war against Afghanistan and also against India. He is one of those daredevils, speakers, and a scholar who protested outside the Chinese embassy in London somewhere in July 2020. And Ajayaka has this privilege to sing one day matram outside the embassy, calling for a boycott of China due to their expansionist policies. The Mujahir, whose cause is being propounded and supported by Arab, are basically migrants who migrated from India to Pakistan in 1947. Even their second and third generation are being called Mujahirs. That is, migrants, immigrants. 
Well, it's a sort of social blot. They have not been considered as part of the uh, part of the state where they have moved, the part of the country where they have moved, and are being maltreated in Pakistan. He has attended many working groups and many working meetings at the UN Working Group of Indigenous Peoples' Rights and UN Working Group on Minorities and UN Working Group are also on extra judicial killings. So this is the background of the speaker today who is with us. We are going to talk, ladies and gentlemen, on Pakistan in the next six months. I'll initiate the discussion by a few questions of, for which I ask Mr. Arif to respond according to his thinking. Mr. Arif, the political instability in Pakistan continues. The future of Pakistan will be shaped, I feel, by a multitude of factors, which include political developments, which include economic trends, which also contain the social dynamics and also the international relations. All these things are going to influence the future of Pakistan. In fact, at this point of time, Imran Khan, who is no longer the Prime Minister of the country, is leading a major popular movement and resentment against the present regime, our present incumbent government. He has not, the present incumbent government has not acceded to the demand for early elections in Pakistan. And this has triggered protests all over Pakistan through the Imran base, the Imran supported, the Imran formed organization. Pakistan army is also, in a way, siding with the incumbent government and has called the Imran's movement by the Imran Tahrike Islam movement as a lust for power. In this background, what do you think, Professor Arif? What could be likely escalation or what could be return to political stability and economic stability in the next six months in Pakistan. Mr. Araf, please. Namaskar, Satsriyakal, and uh, Salaamu Alaikum to everyone. <clears throat> First of all, thank you very much for inviting to this uh, uh, August uh, organization and uh, giving me privilege to speak to your audience. Uh, sir, uh, uh, as per your introduction, uh, I started my uh, human rights career as a worker for Muhajir issue. Muhajirs uh, were facing a military uh, operation in 1992-93-94 and thus I started uh, feeling that I'm living abroad and I'm not uh, going to be persecuted uh, because I'm not in Pakistan. So I started working for Muhajir issues but more and more I came in and I realized that it is not only Muhajirs, but it is Sindhis, Baloch, Pakhtuns, people from POK and Gilgit, Baltistan, Sraikis, religious minorities, all these are persecuted by Pakistani Muslim Punjabis and at the might of their army. And every uh, ethnic minority in Pakistan has faced military operations one way or other. So now, since many years, I'm working on all the issues of Pakistan, especially I, I feel that I was born in Sindh, I was brought up in Sindh. So I am a Sindhi activist and I'm working for an independent state of Sindhu Desh. 
because Sindh was always an independent state from Raja Dahir and before and after also. And uh, it became part of India, but India had uh, more than 500, uh, more than 500 uh, Rajas states uh, of uh, independent small states, which got united in many times, especially in British uh, time, India was one country. Now, coming to your point on Pakistan in next six months, sir, as you introduced about Imran Khan, uh, uh, and his popular movement. I will quote unquote popular now because it is no more popular. It is very unpopular. Everyone is distancing from Imran Khan. He is an isolated soul in his Zaman Park. And uh, when you said that military is standing with this incumbent uh, government, so military was standing with uh, Imran's incumbent government also. And the political stability cannot come to this country because this country is directly or indirectly ruled by uh, military. Either it is through martial law or through dictating many governments. Pakistan is the only glorified democracy of the world in which before elections we know who will be next uh, prime minister and who will make the next government because army always decides we in pakistan have lotas lotas is a term used for uh, members of parliament who are electables and who change their parties according to the wishes of isi the uh, biggest uh, terrorist organization of the world so isi directs these 200 uh, some uh, lotas that next time it will be Imran Khan. So join Imran Khan's party. Now next time it will be People's Party. Join People's Party. So these lotas are actually the political party of ISI, Pakistan Army. So we cannot have stability in Pakistan. Uh, I'm not a palmist or a future teller that I can predict what will happen, but I can tell you one thing that there is no future of Pakistan because it was uh, created for some purposes. It is uh, a, a not uh, a state, independent state created for a people, but it was created for the designs of the masters like British and America. They wanted a buffer zone between Iran, Afghanistan and India, China on north. Uh, so they wanted this country. They divided India and they created this country. And this is the country, the army, which is most obedient servant of superpowers of West. So this country is uh, marching towards its uh, logical conclusion now, because uh, it has uh, served purpose of uh, Western superpowers for many, many years. But now it is too much in uh, problems, especially the economic problems, and West cannot solve Pakistan's economic problem. There can be a large program on economic issues of Pakistan because army is taking more than 50% budget. There is large scale is corruption and all these things. And Pakistan is continuing taking loans and loans and loans after loans. Now, this year's budget last week uh, announced 60% of next year budget will go to payment of interest on the loan. Now tell me how can a country go forward when 60% of its in the budget is going to repayment of loans and interest and remaining 40%, 25% is going to Pakistan army. So Pakistan army has 1.8 trillion budget for next year. Plus, they are taking from civilian budgets like uh, pensions of retired army officers is taken from civilian budget. So all in all, it is about 3 trillion rupees uh, Pakistan army will take from our budget. But what we are getting for education, 18, million, 18 billion. What we are taking for health, 31 billion. Army is taking 3000 billion. So how can this country go on? Army has kept this nation ignorant by putting everyone in madrasas from beginning of their life. So in madrasa, you are taught that, look, uh, Arif, 
don't speak with Sikhs, don't speak with Hindus because they are not good people and Allah will not bless them. You are superior this and that. So it is a country of ignorant people. I don't see any future of it. This member of this memberment of Pakistan is writing on the wall. Sir, uh, you have gone into very wider details indicating that the dismemberment of Pakistan is going to happen soon. The question, my submission was, only in the next six months, what is the state of Pakistan going on? I'll, I'll just let me elaborate. The precarious economic situation and recent catastrophic floods, then inflation, then Pakistan does not produce much, but spends too much. <laughs> then Russian Ukraine war, then release of funds, banning the release of funds from the IMF. This and any expected loan even from friendly countries are not likely in the near future. I agree that Pakistan economy has been facing various challenges and including fiscal deficit, as you pointed out, unemployment and inflation. The economic situation seems to be developing from bad to worse. The fiscal deficit are also increasing. Inflation is all times high. Any improvement, my question is, likely to take place in the coming future, in the six months, or do you feel it is a collapse of Pakistan before the six months, or do you fail? Of course, it is a failing state, but to what extent you think in the next six months, what could be the scenario? That is my summation. Well, uh, I think that uh, the situation is more or less going to remain same in next six months. Because politically, if you see, army has taken tech, uh, kind of full control of the situation. Uh, Bilawal Bhutto is the currently blue-eyed boy of Pakistan army and they are trying that the People's Party of Bilawal Bhutto gets uh, more seats in October's election and uh, elections in October or selections because it will be a selection, it will not be an election. Imran Khan will be certainly disqualified uh, today, right now, before two hours. Uh, a court in Pakistan has issued non bailable warrants, arrest warrants of Imran Khan. So Imran Khan is going to be disqualified uh, before elections. So there will be no Imran Khan. Now all other parties, uh, they are corrupt and everyone know that they don't have any, any uh, qualification to bring Pakistan out of uh, this mess. And they even try, they cannot because army will be dictating terms behind the door. So in six months, I don't see that Pakistan will go any better, but it can go worse because Pakistan has to pay about $13 billion of loans. Pakistan has to repay $13 billion in next six months. Pakistan's foreign exchange reserves are three billion something so and as you said and you being a punjabi you know that pakistan used to be the most fertile land of uh, uh, india undivided india you came from that part it was most fertile pakistan was called an agriculture based uh, society but you have seen how people are standing in the queues for atta we have atta crisis we, I read, I was reading a report day before yesterday from All Pakistan Textile Mills Association, and I was shocked to read that two third of cotton is now imported by Pakistan. Now tell me, sir, you are coming from a farmer's region. Uh, you know Pakistan was a champion in cotton, and it never imported any cotton. Now cotton, two third of Pakistan's textile requirement cotton is imported. There is a crisis of gandum. There is a there is no uh, vast uh, export of mangoes like it used to be before five to ten years. 
so except agriculture we did not make anything as you you told in your introduction that pakistan does not produce anything we produce something which is very much uh, we are biggest producer of terrorists we create terrorism we produce terrorism <laughs> we export terrorism we are very uh, i think we are biggest exporters of terrorism but any productive product we have not uh, been able to put in the market so there will be no future in next 6 month i think that there will be elections any time before or after october because pakistan's current parliament will expire in october it will uh, finish complete its 5 years so according to constitution they cannot go more than 5 years so uh, there will be elections uh, king's party will be made by pakistan army all these parties will fight before elections and after elections whoever has more seats will have a prime minister one will have a foreign minister one will have a home minister like this a chu chu ka murabba will be uh, a government in pakistan and things will continue more or less yes one thing can happen which is more likely moody uh, the uh, credit rating organization uh, uh, international organization and yesterday bloomberg Modi before three days and yesterday Bloomberg have pre predicted that Pakistan government and IMF are not reaching any agreement and it's it's unlikely that they will go for an agreement. So, in July or August, Pakistan will officially default economically. So then we can see what will happen. What are the repercussions? Another development happened today is that Pakistan has agreed to give Karachi port to United Arab Emirates for some billions of dollar because Pakistan is now selling its strategic assets. Karachi port is very important in Pakistan uh, economic and uh, military uh, ways. So let's see what happens. But very difficult six months ahead. Uh, very, very, very pointedly given by you as to the, the in the next six months, situation is not going to be very, uh, very, very optimistic. If it is not going to be very pessimistic, it is just to be seen what happens. You refer to former. um uh, you uh, refer to foreign minister bilawal bhutto and also said that he is the blue eyed boy today and pakistan army may help him to some extent do you think that bilawal bhutto and also the climate change minister sherry rehman have not given adequate hope to pakistan as far well as economy is concerned by approaching people <coughs> on the basis of recovery of the submerged areas under flood and he has been promised quite i understand billion of dollars help for the flood affected areas how this help shall we utilize whether the funds which become available to pakistan shall this fund be used only for flood relief or shall it get diverted to certain political ends that's a big question what do you think about that because you touched bilawal bhutto from there i took the point forward that in this respect the money which comes forth if at all it comes forth that is a promise then what do you think can be the role of this money which will be played in the future few months in pakistan by bilawal bhutto or his party sir uh, <clears throat> first of all uh, i would say that uh, sindh province is pakistan's uh, economic hub and 70% to national exchequer comes from sindh now from uh, 2007 till today in last 16 years bilawal bhutto's people's party is ruling sindh single handedly because it is a party of feudal lords and sindh uh, majority seats are in rural area and in rural area um, uh, these uh, feudal lords have private jails they have bonded labor entire villages are slaves of these uh, feudal lords 
so they are ruling on the might of these feudal lords in support of pakistan army uh, what in last 16 years in sindh he has brought to sindh what has he given to sindh nothing despite producing 70% of pakistan's revenue karachi the capital and karachi giving more than 50% to national exchequer karachi has no safe drinking water system we have to buy tankers in karachi and these tankers are run by pakistan's army's battalion rangers they are earning from this tankers tell me one city in the world cosmopolitan city which has this kind of water crisis we don't have any transport system any there are private buses which are broken and people are riding over the bus tell me a city cosmopolitan city of the world with this kind of infrastructure and who to blame bilawal bhutto and his party because they are ruling since 16 years continuously and since the birth of people's party sindh has always been ruled by pakistan people's party except the martial law area era so bilawal bhutto he is not honest his party is not honest his party is very corrupt totally corrupt and we don't trust them now uh, next prime minister potential next prime minister bilawal bhutto's father asif ali zardari who was not from originally from people's party and zulfikar ali bhutto when he was hanged asif ali zardari's father and his family distributed sweets he was against bhutto but he got married to benazir bhutto opportunist and then he become mr 10% and mr 90% and totally corrupt man and they accused that he killed his wife also benazir mm -hmm. bhutto so he is the major accused uh, in that uh, killing now my question is that uh, asif ali zardari became president of pakistan his party became government of pakistan after murder of benazir bhutto why he did not uh, investigate or bring result of his wife's murder because he was the main accused and asif ali zardari currently is termed in pakistan the biggest politician and he is biggest politician and since the birth of bilawal bhutto he taught him two things he said first of all you are bhutto so you will be ruler of pakistan one day now two second point is that to become ruler of pakistan you have to like boots of pakistan army you have to lick boots of the pakistan army if you continue lick boots of pakistan army you will become ruler of pakistan prime minister of pakistan and after becoming foreign minister he went to united nations new york and uh, uh, outside the new york in press conference he said that butcher of gujarat uh, narendra modi is doing this muslims in india are facing this now tell me what is hindus are facing in sindh delhi on average there are three hindu girls kidnapped raped and married to the death rapist and forcefully converted to islam and he has never spoken a single word about it which is happening in sindh regularly but he is worried about muslims of india because army likes that language army likes that pakistani leaders should keep continuing speaking about india 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 so that even uh, inner self of pakistan people also get satisfied when we speak negatively about india because in pakistan people are trend and educated so much against hindus and in you one question in this case and yes. the moment <coughs> what you are saying ultimately bilawal bhutto may come into power but at this point of some time what i feel is a familiar playbook tactics which was there the army with the civil power the civil power whenever the civil power has to control it has to control only when it has got proper contacts with the army ultimately the army which rules i am saying that how do you think that in this particular stage when khan party controls two provinces even now <coughs> imran khan party controls two provinces even now that is punjab and khyber pakhwana it is controlling too besides in the recent elections by election also it got into 
इस इस पार्टी गॉट इनटू इलेक्शन एंड अब गॉट इलेक्टेड इस मेंबर सो एंड ऑल ऑफ़ इस सदन एट दिस पॉइंट ऑफ़ टाइम ए फ्यू मंथ्स बैक इमरान वाज़ आल्सो गुडी गुडी एंड वेरी गुड विद द बाजवा नो सुनर बाजवा कम नो मनीर आर कम एंड वी स्टार्ट सेइंग दैट नो नो इमरान वि� then in that case, why is not possible for Imran Khan, who is already holding two provinces, and hobnob with the Pakistan army and try to come into power? How, does, how is it possible? You are very much aware of Pakistan's politics. Yes. Uh, there is Imran Khan was nothing before 2018, but he became prime minister. So yeah. it is army, the rigging and everything. And the main thing is that Imran Khan will be disqualified. He will be convicted by court on nine May issues or any. Uh, he will be, be declared traitor. He will be uh, punished. Maybe he will be in jail. So Imran Khan is not in next elections. This is for sure. Because tell me, if Imran Khan is in next election, Imran Khan will end. There are fair, free and fair elections. Imran Khan will win elections. Would army allow Imran Khan to come back in power? Then why all this exercise? Mm -hmm. So Imran Khan will not be in next election. Now, yeah. remaining parties, even Imran Khan's party will be remaining there. But most of the electables have left the party. Even today, Asad Umar, the general secretary, has criticized Imran Khan and he will be out of party very soon, tomorrow or day after tomorrow. So yeah. Imran Khan's party has no one left. So next elections, it will be uh, hung parliament. People's party will sweep Sindh. So they will have many seats from Sindh. Now in Punjab, people's party is making inroads. There was a core commander's meeting uh, uh, last week. And the unofficially, some journalists have uh, reported unofficially to in different WhatsApp groups that in that Pakistan army's chief, General Asim Munir has directed that all the electables that are leaving People's Party, they should be given first pre preference to go to People's Party of Bilawal Bhutto. Oh, I see. <laughs> and uh, Asif Zardari is sitting in uh, Lahore in Punjab and he is maneuvering things. So they are expecting that People's Party will take a majority of the seats in Sindh, many seats in Punjab, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, because Khyber Pakhtunkhwa without PTI will have different parties, two, three seats, four, five seats, six, seven seats. And then Balochistan is always army's province. Balochistan always gets uh, independents elected and then they form a party like after last elections, they created Baap Party, Balochistan Awami Party. So Baap Party was part of Imran Khan. Then when Imran Khan left, Baab party is part of Shabazz Sharif. So it is army's party. So my my uh, as assessment is that Bilawal will get very much support during the elections from Pakistan army. And rigging will be done to make him next prime minister because army has tested that his father is very much pro-Pakistan army since uh, murder of Benazir Bhutto, he is always Pakistan khappe, Pakistan khappe, Pakistan army is the best army and this and that. So they have tested again and again Asif Zardari and Bilawal Bhutto, their sentiments against India, which are they are expressing always. So I think that Bilawal Bhutto will be next prime minister of Pakistan. So my point is that besides the internal threats which you are pointed out at length. What other challenges are likely to get escalated from the borders of Pakistan, thereby impacting the country's political and also security concerns? Let's see, there are three borders uh, with Pakistan, India, Afghanistan, and Iran. Uh, Pakistan is accusing Iranian intelligence agencies of uh, supporting Baloch movement. Mm. So this is one 
Afghanistan, Pakistan brought back Taliban thinking that they will be again our servants. But now Taliban are not listening to Pakistan army. TTP, the tariq taliban Pakistan is a part of Taliban and they have waged a, a, a war with Pakistan army. But I will concentrate on Pakistan's border with India. Another thing is that next year there will be elections in India. And elections are also uh, run in India on sentiments also. Now about POK. Uh, there was an accident of a migrant's boat in uh, near Greece, uh, which was coming from Libya to uh, Italy. <laughs> there were about uh, some say 400 Pakistanis died, some say 500, some say 700. Out of them, I have reported that more than 100 were from POK. Why is it? Mm. Kashmiris are saying that why time and again we see that POK people are dying in these kind of accidents when migrating from Pakistan. While well, we never listen that anyone from Indian uh, Union territory of Jammu and Kashmir uh, going to migrate. Why they are not migrating? Because they have a very beautiful life in India. So POK people now, today's uh, social media time, uh, Pakistan army cannot uh, uh, give them gyan, wisdom of that Indian Kashmiris are subjugated and Pakistani Kashmiris are living in heaven. Now today's social media time, every Kashmiri is comparing themselves to Indian Kashmiris and they say, oh, they are getting such a beautiful infrastructure. They are getting admissions in colleges and universities of entire India. They are getting jobs in entire India. In IPL, look, so many Kashmiri Muslim boys are playing. Kashmiris are getting opportunities. Tourism is increasing there. And we in POK, we, we are standing in the queue to get ATA. We give water to entire Pakistan and we are dying for water. Our women have to walk miles and miles to get uh, safe drinking water. We produce electricity for entire Punjab and we don't get uh, electricity and we have load shedding of 12 to 14 years. So Kashmiris and Gilgit Baltistanis are very much uh, uh, now uh, frustrated. So and, that, uh, the, uh, my, my question is, all this is all right, but it's not being projected as such. Still the army is able to manage that the uh, civilian population of Pakistan supports them. The relationship between civilian and the military institution will always continue to shape the country's political trajectory in Pakistan. That's what I say. And as civil military relationship have always controlled Pakistan's political scenario, do you think that there is any possibility of resolving the present conflicts with the neighboring countries when it is going to be ultimately the same regime which is controlled by and large by the army. What is the position? How is what was going to be the international relationship? What is going to be the relation with the neighboring countries such as India and Afghanistan, as well as global powers like China, United States, and Middle Eastern countries? How will it continue? And what will be the implication for Pakistan in the next six months? Uh, sir, uh, if conflicts with India are solved, then what is the use of this army? So army will lose its uh, uh, sustenance uh, argument because Pakistan army, for example, now uh, Pakistan got separated from India. It should have maintained good relations with its parent country, India, but no, because such a huge army was transferred to Pakistan. Now, there should be a sustenance argument that why do we need this army? Ah, because we have such a huge enemy. So we created Kashmir issue. Why we, we invaded Kashmir? Why Pakistan invaded Kashmir? While Kashmiri leadership had a standstill agreement with both India and Pakistan that we are thinking whom should we join? Pakistan invaded. Now, since 75 years, Pakistan army is taking out our huge part of our budget on the name that we will liberate Kashmir. But they are not going to Kashmir. So as per your question, that these disputes will remain because their remaining 
is sustenance of Pakistan army. Once relationships with India, Afghanistan are solved, Pakistan people will say, oh, army, we don't need you anymore. So the conflicts will not be solved. Now, international power. Of course, China is an uh, anti-India country. And China would never like that Pakistan uh, is broken, number one, because Pakistan is a proxy of China against India. Uh, second thing is that China would never allow POK to become Kashmir. Because if India is taking back its uh, POK and Gilgit Baltistan, it's against China and it will be a huge borderline with China. Already we have India-China LAC and border, but that will be another uh, disputed or uh, problematic border area. So China would always try that POK and Gilgit Baltistan remain with uh, Pakistan. Now about West, America, NATO and all these. This country, Pakistan, was created for benefit of them. <laughs> they want this country. They might be saying that, oh, Modi is great. We are welcoming him in Washington and we, India is this and that. But on the back, who is supporting Pakistan? In 1971, who was standing beside Pakistan army? Why they are not recognizing that there was a genocide in East Pakistan, now Bangladesh? Why America is not recognizing? While every scholar, every think tank of the world accepts that there was a genocide in East Pakistan. Because at that time, Richard Nixon was standing side by side with Pakistan and threatening India that don't do this and don't do this and that. While Pakistan army was butchering Bengalis with the weapons of America. So America is always standing by Pakistan. They might be showing very much love and affection for India because they need it. India is a global superpower now. We don't realize that how big India has become the power, but India is. So America does not want to get in disputed territory with India, but America will keep supporting Pakistan. Uh, <clears throat> my last question uh, on this debate is, you have given all the embryo, what is the sense of any credible conflict resolution machinery is not one of the reason. You see, there has to be a way out of the situation in any country, in any country. At the moment, we cannot deny that Pakistan is a country. What is the way out from this embryo for the country? Pakistan may become Muslim uh, homeland. Is it possible? Ah, there is this Muslim homeland. Are an Islamic state you refer and become close to the Islamic countries? Are rumors are that some senior army, army officer may, may refuse even to obey General Munir Khan? And General Munir Khan is moving about from one garrison to the other garrison to get support of the army. This is also the rumors. What was what is required to be done at this moment by the government and its people in Pakistan? What is the way out for the Pakistan to come out of the present crisis and do not become a fallen state in the next six months? What is the well, brief, very brief, what is the way out which used to be adopted by Pakistan government to come out of the present crisis and do not become a totally fallen state in the next six months? That's my last question. Sir, you have uh, asked me to give a brief reply of such a massive uh, topic. Uh, coming out of Pakistan, uh, what happened in 1971? How did East Pakistan come out of crisis? How? India helped. Coming out of this uh, situation is only one way, and that is dismemberment of Pakistan. Because this Pakistan is no, not going to live humanly in the region. It will continue its proxies in India, Afghanistan, and this and that. It will continue being part of international uh, powers uh, agenda. So, briefly, dismemberment of Pakistan. How, sir? It's a very huge topic, but briefly again. Uh, Pakistan is supporting openly, militarily, so financially, politically, Kashmiris. Pakistan is openly supporting militarily, financially, and politically Khalistanis. 
Why India is not supporting Balochistan? Why India is not supporting Azad Sindhu Desh movement? Why India is not supporting Pakhtuns? Why India is not taking back its parts POK and Gilgit Baltistan? So one way or other, in, it is in the hand of India to decide the future of Pakistan. Uh, thank you very much, uh, sir, for a very cryptic reply. And the last part, I can understand very well that you feel that ultimately the end seems to be dismemberment. And and then and, and, and you are very briefly touched the issues which are very topical today. That why Pakistan is supporting Khalistanis, why on the other hand, uh, uh, India is not supporting Balochistan. So your hints are very clear and assessment is very clear. I think the situation is really, really very sad for any country who is sitting by its side because ultimately the country on the border of another country, a neighboring country, Alcar, also gets affected. So gets affected at least in, in passage of time, it may get affected also territorially or maybe when there's an enlargement of the territory by the India, or there's a dismemberment in that area, or the China comes in because of the economic corridor, which is having in Pakistan. I mean, the situation is very fluid. And in this fluid situation, I think, let the people, the intelligentsia in Pakistan, they join their heads together and try to take the country out of the present embroglio. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, it's a pleasure talking to you. It has been indeed a great pleasure. And we have got very, very good ideas from you. And really, I, I, I really appreciate. And let's wait for some other occasion when we get your opinion once again. Thank you very much, Arab Thank, Thank you so much. Pleasure and honor was all mine. Thank you very much for giving me honor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.